Heidi Briones, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kim. It's Super been excited. a long it's been a long time coming. We've um we, we've been chatting back and forth on Twitter, or I guess what do they call it now? X. X, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get on with that. I don't know. That's tough. Um, yeah, That's like why did, yeah. why did he it's it's like a 14 year old took over Twitter and was like, let's call it X. <laughs> so cool. He always wanted to have X, you know, that was like what PayPal was called before right. it was PayPal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now he's finally got it, I guess. Um yeah. Yeah, so it's been a long time coming. We've we've chatted a lot. Sometimes disagreed. A lot of times agreed on on Twitter, and so yeah. it's great to finally have you on here to discuss some of I think really important issues that are really truly. Uh, I got to say, like when this when the trans movement really started, I I even did not think it was as big of a deal. I mean, I kind of thought, oh, people are blowing this out of proportion. It's really you mm -hmm. know they're they're taking like a few tiny minor instances that are not really affecting very many people's lives. It's kind of like when when the left was going on and on and on about racism, like, oh, racism everywhere. Ra everybody's a racist. <laughs> they were calling everybody, you know, like if they wrote your name wrong at a Starbucks, you're like, racist. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and it was almost like the left made people believe that if they just walked out of their front door, they would be dealing with racism all day, every day. And that's just not the reality for, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm even a person of color and I never, you know, it's just like, what are they talking about? And I kind of felt like the trans movement or the trans hysteria, I should say, was similar to that. But I have to say that my, my stance on that has now changed um, because it does seem to be way more prevalent, especially with our youth than than any sort of like um, potential racism a kid might have experienced, for example, at school. I just don't think they're really dealing with that as much, but they are being confronted with this. Tr Do you think it's an agenda? So the, the right will call mm -hmm. it an agenda, which has a connotation yeah. to it, right? That means like there's a plot, a plan. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's to the point of an agenda? I do. I do think there's a radical trans agenda. Um, and I think it's multifaceted. But the reason why I think it's an agenda is because after same sex marriage was, you know, ruled to be legal by the Supreme Court 2015, and, you know, many states had it already, but once it was, you know, in the whole country, uh, you know, you saw groups like HRC and GLAAD uh, immediately switch uh, to focus on trans issues and hardcore, like hardcore, uh, you know, fundraising for trans issues, you know, getting emails, getting all of this stuff about protect trans kids, you know, selling the protect trans kids shirts and making a lot of money um, fundraising off of this. And, you know, that's part of it because of that, you know, that that's the political agenda part. And then I do think there's also like a for profit, um, you know, agenda for sure, because you're taking young, healthy people and giving them expensive, you know, surgeries where it's like, technically, you know, you wouldn't normally be able to do that, like young, healthy people and give them these surgeries. It's usually older people, you know, who who'd mm -hmm. have those types of expenses. So I think that's it's a multifaceted agenda. But I do think at this point, I mean, when, once you start going for kids, um, it gets younger and younger. Uh, you know, you have to think like there is some something kind of malicious going on here. It's not just that there's suddenly all these trans, you know, kids. It's like, were there really that many trans kids before? And they just didn't have, you know, like there was just, they weren't accepted. I have a really hard time um, believing that, you know. <laughs> I really think a lot of these kids are, you know, possibly confused. Maybe some of them are gay and lesbian. Maybe some of them are just going through a phase. Maybe some are depressed. Maybe some are undiagnosed or diagnosed autistic. There's so many different things. But when you look at the therapy they're receiving and how they're just being fully affirmed, um, it's called gender affirming therapy. You know, therapists aren't even really allowed to question it because, you know, it's considered a suicide risk. So you have that. I mean, it's hard to think that this isn't, you know, an agenda or planned out, uh, you yeah. know, in, in some way. Yeah. I mean, I, it definitely, I guess, could be an agenda. I don't know what the end point, like what would be the purpose of that agenda. Uh, I, But I do hear you. It's especially when you bring up like the, the gay rights and how it like, what do you do once you receive your rights? Like once you, mm -hmm. you know, the, the movement achieved the goal and then at the mm -hmm. end of but you've got all these organizations. And I think we see this with a lot of different movements where we see the industry of it kind of 
uh, like even war. I mean, we know the military industrial complex and that is because it was like, okay, we, we built this whole thing up during World War II. And then it's like, oh, now what do we do with it? Well, can't all of a sudden lay off all these people and can't all of a sudden, you know, scale it back. We got to just pivot and do something else with it. Right. More war. Um, and, and it's, it's, you know, many of us had never connected the dots that it, that would be the same sort of thing that would happen inside of these like activist movements and even these yeah. like nonprofits and charities, right? Once they achieve their goal, what do they do? And so <laughs> they just pivot. And it's interesting that the gay rights movements, these, these organizations that were very well funded, very well mm -hmm. and built up and had deeper and, and careers were, I mean, people made their oh, careers yeah. in these organizations. Then yeah, they would say, well, we got to pivot to trans now because gays have the rights that we wanted gays to have. I mean, are there any rights as a gay woman yourself? Are there any rights you're lacking at this point? Well, because of the trans movement, I think, yes, because we can't have uh, female only spaces, um, you know, lesbian only um, spaces anymore. I mean, that's a huge um, issue that I talk about a lot. I have um, you know, younger lesbians reach out to me as somebody who's, you know, I'm in my 40s, supposedly I'm supposed to, you know, know how things go and kind of offer them some mentorship or something, um, you know, and they're in their 20s and they're like, what do I do? Where do I go? There's nowhere that I can go where lesbians are. And I'm just thinking that just boggles my mind because when I was, you know, in the early and mid 2000s, there were plenty of places to go, plenty of lesbian only nights and it was only women. And there were plenty of you know, bars, it felt, it felt fine. It felt like there were plenty of safe spaces. And then, you know, to hear that from these younger women, I'm thinking, wow, that's really a shame. And, you know, you Who's even showing have showing up. I mean, so they're saying they're, or yeah. are they not even hosting lesbian nights anymore or are they, but then it's like a bunch of dudes show up and they're like, we're women and we <laughs> like women. So we're lesbians. <laughs> well, Kim, yeah. I mean, it's funny because in the eighties, I think up to like the early nineties, there were over, let's see, like, what was it? The lesbian bar project says there were about 200 lesbian bars in the U S and now they estimate there's about 30. Um, so, so they, that's quite they don't a reduction. Is it that they don't label themselves? Like how, how could this have been, or do they just, or, or, or do they relabel? They change the label. They were like, oh, we have to be more inclusive. What would they change most the of label them to? Have, well, most of them have closed down. And I mean, oh. the lesbian bar project is including inclusive. They specifically say, which I have beef with them on. They say the lesbian bar project believes what makes a bar uniquely lesbian is its prioritization of creating space for people of marginalized genders, including women, regardless if they are cis or trans, non-binary folks and trans men. Um, and you know, whatever, that's fine. But I would, the, the actual lesbian bars, like the Lexican, Lexington and San Francisco, um, you know, several ones in Portland uh, that were actually lesbian bars have shut down. Um, and there's multiple reasons for that. I mean, some of it is financial. Um, you know, they just weren't able to operate through multiple, you know, like recessions and, and everything else. Um, but a lot of it is also that they became, you become so inclusive that it becomes meaningless and you, you're not attracting um, lesbians anymore. If you're like saying everybody can come, okay, well then what's the point of a young lesbian wanting to go there if it's just right. like a totally inclusive place that defeats the purpose? But I mean, a lesbian bar, did they, did, they didn't turn away like non-lesbians, did they? Not non-lesbians. I mean, you could totally be a woman because I mean, you know, I mean, hey, <laughs> but if you were a man, I used to work at a girl bar in West Hollywood. And so this is a pretty good example. It was considered, it was called girl bar. It's considered a lesbian bar. Yes, there were men in there sometimes, but I used to promote for their big girl night, which they, um, they had a competition with a bar across the street that had another lesbian night called truck stop. And I would promote for girl bar. And so I'd give out flyers and stuff. And basically they would not let in a man just like by himself. Mm -hmm. um you know at all or like a group of men definitely not it had you had to be a man with like a group of women kind of vouching for you and then there was like some men in there but that was still considered like a lesbian bar it wasn't like you couldn't just they would just turn away men if they were just trying to come in they'd be like sorry no like this is a lesbian bar so you know we did have that kind of you know a middle ground where private businesses could still be like no we refuse to serve you period. And right. I don't, and that's not happening anymore in the name of inclusivity. Um, you know, everybody is just allowed to come in because it's like, well, a man could just say, I identify as a woman, I'm a lesbian and they can't really say anything. Right. And they can, but they're refusing to. Right. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Th that is where it does get really, it, 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 it things have become so confusing, I think. <laughs> You think, yeah. right? Like trans, you know, and I, I don't, I don't mean to be by any means like unsympathetic or, 
Um, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. And I know, I know, uh, several, I have, I have trans friends, for example. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, you cannot, in my opinion now, especially since this has become to the forefront, I mean, maybe if you would have asked me five years ago, I've been like, whatever, <laughs> but now that it's like, so pro it's so, you know, and, and the reason why I think also why I've changed my opinion on it being more of a problem than what I thought it was, was because now I know personally so many people who have a child who says I'm trans. You do? Yes. I have several friends that, you know, for me, it was always like, oh, you heard of somebody who heard of somebody who knew right. somebody who went to school with somebody, <laughs> you know, right. but it's like, I know personally, at least three that I can think of off wow. the top of my head. Are they right mostly now. like little girls transitioning to boys or the other way or just both or? All girls transition to right. boys. Right. All three so that, that is I what know. We're seeing. Um, and that is one thing I'm concerned about as well, because, uh, you know, they did a longitudinal study that showed that most um, gender nonconforming little girls would end up being lesbian or bisexual um, when they grew up. And so most of those little girls, I mean, you've seen, I think, it, I forget what the number is. It could be eight, eight times the amount of, um, you know, little girls transitioning than there were 10 years ago. And it just keeps going up. It's exponential at this point to where you're seeing so many little girls um, become boys. And, um, you know, I mean, social transition is one thing. I mean, I think that that could be fine. I, I consider that okay. Like maybe that's a phase and you could just be accepting of it, but the medical sure. transition, that's where I'm very concerned because a right. lot of those are permanent um, changes that they're not going to be able to take back. Yeah, it's um um, and all three of the girls interestingly come from conservative families, like more so than right. More they're seeing more that. Well, you saw yeah. that Fox News special on that, right? There was a Fox News no. um segment where it was uh yeah young uh you know basically a, a conservative family and they had a young girl and she started showing signs that she was gender nonconforming possibly lesbian and they were so concerned about it and then the the little girl comes to them and says no I'm not I'm not a lesbian I'm a boy like I'm I'm actually a boy and they're like oh okay and then they just like <laughs> it was literally like that and they just start transitioning and then they're like it's so great that you know, he now he can um, have a girlfriend and go to prom and have like a normal, uh, you know. Wow, what a workaround! And you're like, what a workaround what? for these yeah, like, so like to me, it's Christian families, right? It's like it, it was very homophobic. I was like, wow. So now you can have a little, you know, heterosexual, you know, boy, um, which is really would have been, you know, a lesbian, which would have been horrible, you know. But now right. it's fine. Oh, I, you know, I'm wondering if, because there are so many Christian um, conservatives who do not believe in gay marriage at all. They do not, you know, they, they would shun their child if their child was gay. Wouldn't yeah. be, you know, there are families like this for sure. Oh, yeah. It's, it's um, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm curious if they, if those families would be more like, well, if you transition, then it's okay. Then we're cool. I'm, I've seen it. I mean, I've seen it in my extended family. There's one instance that I could think of, and they're pretty conservative. I mean, they even moved from California to Texas because California was too liberal for them. And they moved over there. And then one of their children, you know, has transitioned and become um, become a boy now. And yeah. they seem to be fine with it. I mean, I'm sure it's upsetting in some ways, but they seem to be like, hey, you know, it, it, it Better helps than being them. Is that I, that's, what, that's what it feels like. It really feels like that. And so that's what's wow. concerning. And I've, I've talked to many young lesbians that have um, detransitioned that did, did get, you know, wrapped up in the whole uh, trans agenda. You know, we can call it that for the purposes of the conversation, but they got wrapped up into it and they transitioned either just socially. I've talked to some that just did socially and then went back or some that, you know, unfortunately did medical procedures that they can't take back now. And they're, you know, but now they've decided, no, I'm, I'm detransitioned. And actually I was just a lesbian and I just like had a hard time dealing with it. And it, it's upsetting, you know, it's concerning for like somebody that's an older lesbian to be like, wow, what do I do for these younger people? Like, how do I even, I can't even wrap my mind around that. Like, like that's not even something I can help them with at all. And they have nobody to talk to if they've detransitioned and they're, you know, in their mid twenties, um, there's really, you know, no group for them to go to nothing. They've just, they have a few people that they can talk to about this type of thing. Yeah, it is. Um, and it, it, even teachers in schools are saying that they're seeing more and more students come out saying, yeah, it, I mean, it would be one, it would be, it should be r so rare that you would never even come across one in your, in your teaching career. Yeah. It used to be, it right. used to be very, very rare. And you know, and and it's and I believe I still believe it's a real thing. I do believe trans is a real thing. I just think it's a very small percentage of people that suffer from actual 
real gender dysphoria, right. um, you know, that has no other potential cause or anything else. Um, and, you know, those people are real. And I have friends that are, you know, transsexuals is what they used to call it. So some of them still call themselves that because it's like the old school idea of being trans where it's like I go through a lot of therapy. I figure myself out. I'm old enough to make the decision. And then I realize this is what's right for me. And I accept the consequences and I and I go through it. Um, but that's not what's happening with the younger kids. They're not old enough to accept what the potential consequences could be. No. And, and the, the concerning part is that they are being rather than being talked to saying, you know, look, this could be a phase. Look, this could be, mm -hmm. you know, you're maybe you have other issues that we need to address. They're instead being it, the 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 climate right now is you must affirm or else. And if you don't affirm, yeah. you're going to lose your job. If you're like a school mm -hmm. counselor, if you're a nurse someplace, um, it's parents are being threatened that they would lose their child entirely if they question yeah. trans kid or identity. dead kid. They've been they've been told that, you know, would you rather have a trans kid or a dead kid? That's the line. Thanks for watching this clip from The Kim Iverson Show. That's right. This is just a clip. If you want the whole show, you can go to KimIversonShow.com. There is a full live show that airs one hour every Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. That is where this clip is from. Watch the entire show. Watch the whole interview. Again, go to KimIversonShow.com. It's totally free to watch. Uh, that link will redirect you someplace that I can't talk about here on YouTube because of censorship. So... Um, just click the link or go to KimIversonShow.com. That'll reroute you to where this show is every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. See you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching this clip. Have a great one.